Hello, Jessica. Please come to Harris Restaurant in front of the station immediately. The whole family is waiting here for you. What? Harris Restaurant, that high-end French place? What do you mean the whole family is waiting? Actually, I reserved the place. I have invited even the family members who usually can't attend. The cost will be around $10,000. I will pay with your credit card. Please hurry. With that, my husband Jay hung up the phone. Am I paying $10,000? That's absurd. I just stood there in disbelief. But this wasn't a surprise or a shock. I was just appalled by my husband's foolishness. He truly understands nothing. Despite my having everything under control, my husband has placed himself at the gates of hell. And without hesitation, I'm considering pushing him right to the bottom. With that thought, I left the house. 30 minutes later, I arrived at Harris Restaurant. Jay was waiting alone. He greeted me with a creepy smile that didn't suit the luxurious decor of the restaurant. It seems the relatives are already waiting in another room, but Jay started talking proudly using that to his advantage. Jessica, as I mentioned earlier, I'll freely use your credit card. It may seem tough, but a wife's money belongs to her husband, after all. It's only natural for a wife to support her husband, right? You have no complaints, right? I was speechless. Such unbelievable foolishness. According to my husband, 20 relatives have gathered, and he has booked a luxurious course costing $500 per person. Harris Restaurant is indeed a high-end French restaurant with a variety of courses, and enjoying them at reasonable prices is one of its charms. Yet, my husband deliberately chose the most expensive $500 course. It's as if tormenting his wife is his hobby. Unaware of jeopardizing his own position, Jay seemed quite pleased with himself. In such a ridiculous situation, all I could do was laugh. A wife's wallet belongs to her husband? It's natural for a wife to support her husband? But you know, I stopped that a month ago. What? You stopped being a wife? You can't just quit that easily. Divorce requires formal procedures. You know that, right? Jay, you don't understand anything. If you did, you wouldn't have reserved such an upscale place. How do you plan to pay without money? Are you planning to dine and dash? I would never do something so foolish. I'll say it again. I'll pay with your credit card. If you don't like it, I really will make you quit being my wife, okay? Right after that, I pulled out a document and thrust it in front of my husband. And I revealed just how incompetent he was. I canceled the credit card a month ago. Here's the cancellation certificate. I prepared it because I thought you wouldn't believe me. So, the credit card is unusable. And I'll ask again, with no money, what are you going to do? Are you planning to run away? What? I can't use your credit card? That's impossible. That cancellation certificate, it must be fake. After all, the credit card I took was from your purse. If it really was canceled, there's no reason to keep it in your purse. Hey, so you're not hiding that you took it from my purse? I left the cancelled card in there because I thought you might steal it. You were completely fooled, poor thing. Jessica, what's that attitude? It's unacceptable for a wife to speak to her husband like that. Jay considers himself superior to his wife. It must be unbearable for him to feel outsmarted by someone he deems lower than himself. His irritation peaked and he raised his voice without concern for those around. Despite talking in a corner of the restaurant, his voice reached the staff and the place began to buzz. Looking around, Jay suddenly put on a smile and hurriedly tried to manage the situation. Despite gesturing that everything was fine, the whispers around continued. 
Jay was blushing with embarrassment, but compared to the troubles that awaited him, this was still bearable. Soon after, my in-laws came over to me. It seems Jay's voice had clearly reached the relatives as well. Jay, what are you doing? The relatives are all shocked. You're disturbing other guests too. Look, everyone is watching. Ahaha. Oh, I just got a bit excited. It's nothing serious, so don't worry. It seemed the in-laws hadn't heard the details of the conversation and looked puzzled, but they said nothing further. Jay was smiling slyly, trying to smooth things over, but he must have been relieved inside that his parents-in-law had arrived. He only shows his true self to me. Especially since he works for the company run by his father, he always pretends to be the ideal husband in front of him. I too made a face of disbelief like the in-laws, but Jay quietly looked at me. Do not say anything unnecessary. I won't forgive you if you do. I felt this implicit pressure from him. He has always tried to intimidate me and dominate by force. I was scared and I complied, but at that time I couldn't bear it anymore. Jay inviting the relatives was the perfect opportunity to expose his true face in front of everyone. I started the conversation with my in-laws. About settling today's bill, Jay planned to use my credit card. He took the card from my purse and reserved the restaurant without my permission. A! exclaimed my in-laws in surprise. That credit card was actually cancelled a month ago. But Jay doesn't know that and was planning to use it carelessly. He doesn't have any money, so how does he plan to pay, I explained. Wait a minute, Jessica. I don't understand. Are you saying Jay stole your card and was planning to settle today's payment? Jay said he would pay today's expenses. It will cost about $10,000, but leave it to me, he said. If what you say is true, was he actually planning to burden you with $10,000? That's hard to believe. Could there be some misunderstanding? They questioned. My in-laws were visibly shaken. This is the usual response. Even after thinking it over, it's unbelievable, but it's certainly true. Wanting to hide this fact, my husband started speaking brightly while wearing a wry smile. Jessica is mistaken. I plan to entertain everyone at my own expense. I'll settle the payment in advance, so don't worry. Leaving those words behind, my husband went to the cashier to pay, throwing a creepy smile towards me. It was clear he hadn't accepted that I had canceled the credit card. He still seemed not to believe me even after I showed the cancellation certificate of the card. After a while, my husband returned to us with a smile. My in-laws seemed relieved that the payment was successfully made, but I could sense my husband's tension. He must be panicking inside, thinking, this is bad. The credit card couldn't be used. That's to be expected, as I had certainly canceled the card. The only choice left for him was to pay the $10,000 himself, but he was incapable of doing that. I also knew what he was hiding. At that moment, I gave him a cold look. Tell the truth before things get worse, I pressured him. Realizing my intent, his complexion changed. After pondering, he finally revealed the truth. Sorry, Dad, Mom. I actually couldn't make the payment. Jessica's credit card really was canceled. Is that the truth? Were you planning to use Jessica's card to pay? Absolutely a misunderstanding. It's true that I intended to pay today's expenses with Jessica's credit card, and I had discussed this properly. I was just shocked to find out the card had already been canceled. I apologize, but I'll have to ask to pay for this myself. I will definitely repay. He was weaving lies and truth to escape. It seemed that was the way out he had devised. With astonishing audacity, my husband whispered to me secretly, 
Hey, why did you cancel the credit card? Are you trying to embarrass me? Why? It's obvious because I didn't want you to use it without permission. The real issue is using the card without consent, not the embarrassment that follows. Despite my husband whispering, I responded boldly. He interrupted me with a surprised look. Quiet. Don't talk about such things here. Keeping a canceled card in your purse only causes confusion. However, it seemed that my in-laws had overheard our conversation and they looked at my husband sternly. Jay, what are you doing? What do you mean you tried using Jessica's card? Taking it from her purse without permission is unacceptable. Uh, well, there were circumstances. My husband was short on words when his father pressed him. I decided to explain the events in detail instead, intending to expose his true character in front of his parents. For the past year, Jay has hardly returned home all of a sudden. I understood he was busy, as your company is quite large, father-in-law. However, Jay started going out even on holidays and began missing important dates like my birthday and our anniversary. Moreover, he started caring more about his appearance and began using my credit card without my permission. My parents-in-law looked at each other upon hearing this. Both must have had an ominous feeling. I asked Jay that we spend more time together as a couple and that he stop using the credit card without permission. But he argued that it's natural for a wife to cater to her husband and didn't listen. Worse, he threatened divorce and showed me a divorce form he already signed. Divorce my father-in-law exclaimed in surprise. Have you been making Jessica suffer so much my mother-in-law raised her voice. My father-in-law stared sternly at his son, realizing that his illusion of his son being an exemplary husband had shattered, though there was hope that my husband would admit his mistakes. No, that's not it. What Jessica is saying is baseless. I need to be mindful of my appearance as I am preparing to take over as president. The meetings I attend on weekends are networking events and seminars, part of my work. What's wrong with using joint funds for work-related purposes? If I stop earning, my wife would suffer too. My husband tried desperately to defend himself. It seems he wanted to claim that he was not at fault. My in-laws remain silent. Perhaps they found some reason in my husband's explanation and could not reproach him. However, I knew the truth he was hiding. No matter his excuses, they were meaningless. Oh, is that so? Then can you still say it's part of your job after looking at this? With that, I decided to present further evidence to my in-laws. From my handbag, I pulled out a document. It listed the dates, store names, and amounts spent. What is this statement? This is a credit card statement. As you can see, it details purchases of luxury items for women. Why would you have something like that? As I showed the document, my husband hurriedly tried to snatch it, but I swiftly brushed off his hand and stared at him, pressing him for answers. Why did you purchase luxury items for women with my credit card? Cosmetics and jewelry aren't necessary for your job, are they? Can you explain this specifically? Uh, that was. For gifting to the women at work, I was giving them as birthday presents. It's important to be favored by women in business, you know. The expense involved is inevitable, right? His explanation was perplexing, but considering his reputation at work, there might be some truth to it. Hearing it was for birthday presents might seem reasonable. However, this was the first time my husband failed to convince his parents. Whatever the purpose, the fact remains you used Jessica's card without permission. If it really was necessary, you should have discussed it with Jessica. Buying luxury brands because female colleagues asked for them? 
That doesn't seem credible. I'm sorry. I apologize for using my wife's card. I promise never to do it again. Please forgive me. With that, my husband made an apologetic gesture towards us and his parents. However, my father-in-law's anger did not subside easily, and he sternly admonished my husband, just because you're married doesn't mean you can use a credit card without permission. Moreover, because the amount is substantial, make sure to reimburse Jessica for the money spent. All right, I'll refund the money. My husband appeared disheartened and seemed reflective as he looked down, but I was still not convinced. Does he think I don't know he's still hiding something? This was just the beginning of the real test. My husband and I, along with his parents, headed to the room where the other relatives were waiting. There, I pulled out my smartphone from my bag and pressed the play button. The sudden playback surprised my husband, and he stared at me in disbelief, his face quickly turning pale. The audio was a conversation between a man and a woman where my husband was insulting me and the woman was saying, hurry up and divorce your wife. The surrounding family members were shocked by this revelation. Jay, who is this woman I asked? Uh, well, um, my husband frantically searched for an excuse. During this, his parents glared at him with expressions filled with anger. The relatives were also appalled by the scene. My husband faced another crisis immediately after the credit card issue, without a moment to catch his breath. There's no hiding it anymore. You were having an affair, weren't you? I asserted. At this, my husband began to sweat and shouted something in response. That's not true. I'm not having an affair. It was wrong of me to speak ill of you. But she's just a friend, and we were just hanging out. By the way, when did you prepare this? Eavesdropping is illegal. Although he confirmed that he had insulted me, he continued to deny the affair. Moreover, he tried to shift the focus of the conversation and point the blame at me. However, I was not backing down. I explained the facts to him so that he couldn't escape them. Jay, I've been watching you for a long time. The credit card history made the affair obvious. That's why, while you pretended to go to work, I installed a listening device in your car. A listening device in the car? That's ridiculous. As I said earlier, eavesdropping is illegal. Do you understand that? If it's to catch evidence of infidelity, it's not illegal as long as it's not for stalking or similar behavior. This strong stance showed that I was prepared to do whatever necessary to uncover the truth, prioritizing my well-being and seeking justice in our troubled relationship. My husband fell silent, fully aware that he was struggling to justify himself. However, he couldn't bring himself to admit it and appealed to his parents and relatives. Everyone, please don't believe what she's saying. She's trying to trap me. I haven't been unfaithful. What a troublesome person. While sighing, I threw a document at my husband in front of the relatives. What is this? What do you think? It's a demand for compensation. At that, my husband's complexion changed rapidly. This document is a demand for compensation I sent to my husband's mistress. It was confirmed through investigation. You were having an affair with a woman named Mary. So I visited Mary and demanded compensation from her before you. You met Mary directly and demanded compensation? What were you thinking? My husband was so shocked that he was rendered speechless. However, he is the one being excessive. It's unreasonable for him to blame me while overlooking his own mistakes. Surprised, aren't you? But she told me everything. She didn't hide your wrongdoings. You were buying luxury items for her with my credit card, weren't you? The excuse about gifts for female employees was obviously a lie. 
It was all used for her, in fact. Mary told you everything. If the evidence is complete, it's undeniable. Mary also honestly admitted to the affair and agreed to pay compensation because of my card. That's why I brought this compensation claim. My husband looked up at the sky, his face filled with despair. I waved the compensation claim lightly and displayed it in front of my husband. Unable to hide his irritation, my husband raised his voice. Damn, to think you planned all this without me noticing. Truly a cunning wife. Eh, wife? I was your wife, but that's a thing of the past. I told you a month ago that I quit. Didn't you hear? In fact, the divorce papers have already been submitted. I'm just an acquaintance now. Did you really submit the divorce papers? Why are you surprised? I simply submitted the divorce papers you waved in my face to trouble me. Everything's done through the proper procedures. Any complaints? But you shouldn't just file for divorce on your own. Divorcing without discussion is unreasonable. It might be unreasonable, but the fact that you used my credit card without permission doesn't change. That's why I filed the divorce papers on my own. Now this matter is settled. My husband was speechless and astonished. It was clear he hadn't anticipated my actions. My in-laws and other relatives watching this exchange seemed to realize that my story was true. Using Jessica's credit card without permission and having an affair. To think we believed you two were happily married and you were committing such betrayals. The entire family grimaced with anger and sternly reprimanded my husband. My father-in-law declared resolutely to my husband, this marks the end of our relationship as parent and child. Additionally, you are fired from the company. Fired? Just for an affair? This is too harsh, think about it calmly. At that moment, a sharp snap sound echoed. It came from my mother-in-law. She had slapped my husband's cheek hard. Tears were brimming in her eyes. Sadness, pity, and disappointment were intermingling in her gaze. Just an affair? You're the one who's wrong, Jay. You plan to hurt Jessica and just run away. Silenced by his mother's angry voice, my husband said nothing. At that moment, all eyes coldly blamed my husband. Merely an affair, he had said, revealing his irresponsibility. My wife's money is mine. A wife should devote herself to her husband, he had loudly proclaimed. Such selfish attitudes were unforgivable. My husband remained silent for a while, but his stubbornness was unyielding. He slowly raised his head and declared resolutely, it doesn't matter what happens, be it divorce or being fired, I'm going to be with Mary. What did you say? Surprisingly, my husband defiantly revealed his plans to marry another woman immediately after our divorce. Then, he confidently declared, I am skilled enough to work at any company without a problem. My father's company is worthless. As long as I have Mary, that's all I need. I truly love her. Marrying her is all I need. My in-laws were stunned by his words. Despite being coerced into a divorce, ostracized by his family, and losing his job, my husband still maintained a defiant stance. However, his attitude was reaching its limit. You might not know this, but Mary has been dating several other men as well. That's a lie. Mary loves only me. You're just jealous and making this up. But this is the truth. She has relationships with multiple men, and you were not the most important to her. Not the most important. Yes, you were not that significant to her. In fact, she paid the compensation to me quickly to avoid problems. I can't believe it. I didn't think Mary was that kind of woman. 
The idea that Mary had feelings for you was just a delusion. You were just being used. By the way, the compensation she paid me was actually funded by another man she was seeing. That's a lie, a lie. There's no way Mary would deceive me. We are going to get married. Nothing you do can stop us. It seems my husband still couldn't accept reality. So I calmly confronted him with the truth. It's about time you understand that you've been abandoned. Haven't you been unable to contact Mary recently? Neither calls nor messages are going through, right? Now that you mention it, my husband faltered. It seems he could understand that fact. In short, you are no longer needed. You've been blocked. I am no longer needed. Yes, exactly. Have you understood now? There is nothing left for you. It is a fitting end for someone who has deceived others as you have. After telling him this, he collapsed to his knees and bowed his head right there. Please, Jessica. I am truly sorry. Please forgive me. It seemed that my husband had realized his situation. Please reconsider the divorce. Please rescind the firing he pleaded repeatedly, bowing to me and my in-laws. However, everyone had moved away from his side. It's too late for apologies now. I will firmly demand the property division and the money you squandered using my credit card. A person like you is just a nuisance to any organization. If you think you can work somewhere else, go ahead and try. It will prove to be worthless anyway. Please, don't leave me like this. I am reflecting on my actions. Can I have just one more chance? With tears in his voice, my husband continued to appeal to his father while keeping his head bowed. However, my former father-in-law, having given up on his son, ignored him and hurried out of the restaurant. His wife followed him. The relatives also proceeded with their preparations to go home, showing no further interest in my husband. Well, I'll settle the payment then. What? You're paying the $10,000. Of course, I will bill it later. I smiled sweetly. So, he muttered as he collapsed onto his knees. Today, due to my retaliation, it became the most painful day for him. However, this story is not yet over. His ordeal will continue. After the incident, I returned to my parents' house, but I have been receiving numerous missed calls for the past few days. All of them were from my ex-husband, Jay. The phone is still ringing incessantly, and I am aware of the reason why. I had been deliberately ignoring him, but I decided to answer the phone this time to deliver the final blow. Jessica, you finally answered. Please, help me out. I'm truly in trouble. Hin, sounds like a tough situation. What happened? Are you trying to escape debt collectors? What? How did you know that? Did someone tell you? No, I found out through my own research. Jay, you have accumulated a substantial amount of debt, haven't you? Not only have you been giving money to your mistress, but I heard you've also been paying your co-workers to do your job. Despite their repeated refusals, you force them to comply by exploiting your position as the boss's son, using dirty tactics to keep up appearances at the company and enjoying affairs in your free time, taking on debt just to have your way. Such foolish actions. On the day when the family gathered at that fancy restaurant, when it was discovered that the credit card had been canceled, the only option for Jay was to pay the $10,000 himself. But I knew it was impossible for him to do so. I had already investigated and knew about his significant debt. Jay, this is all the result of your own doing. But you're capable, aren't you? You can surely excel elsewhere. Leaving your father's company shouldn't be a problem, right? Uh, well. 
The truth is, I haven't found another job yet. All the interviews have been unsuccessful and I'm being chased for my debts, which has taken a toll on me mentally. Ha ha, that's exactly why I asked. What can be expected from someone who pushed his work onto others to boost his own performance? Even if you find another job, it won't last. Don't you understand that? Jay couldn't respond. My accusations hit the mark. Unless he reflects on his actions and changes his ways, he'll continue making the same mistakes forever. If things continue this way, he will face nothing but agony, even without my intervention. Jessica, I truly regret everything. I should have cherished you more. I should have worked sincerely at my father's company, but I neglected that. I'm sincerely reflecting, so won't you consider starting anew with me? I must say it's impossible to try again. I believe people can change, but there are unforgivable actions. You deceived not only me but also many others who trusted you. You need to pay the price for that. Of course, you will also fully repay the property division and the money you misused. Escaping is absolutely not an option. After confirming that Jay had fallen silent again, I calmly ended the call. A few days later, I had the opportunity to hear more about Jay's recent situation from my former in-laws. As expected, he hadn't found a stable job to transition to and ended up seeking support from his family. I need help because we're family. Is it okay for our son to end up like this? He was desperately pleading for support with such words. He ignored his family and deceived his relatives, only to ask for help when he himself was in trouble. How can he think such self-centered behavior is acceptable? His thinking has always been self-centered, focused only on himself. The reason Jay has lived so comfortably up to now is because of the help and support from those around him, but I have never once heard a word of gratitude from him. If I had seen his true nature before getting married, I would have never married him. I deeply regret having endured everything alone without consulting anyone. Had I consulted my in-laws or other relatives sooner, perhaps a completely different future would have awaited me. From now on, I will face myself more honestly, aiming to become stronger and more resolute. It's time to say goodbye to the weaker version of myself and step forward with a firm resolution into a new beginning.